Greetings, Guardians. My name is Byfear. So, it happened. What we all were dreading might occur has indeed occurred. This thing that might well be a part of the key manipulations of Savathun, she told Crow about his past. A few weeks ago, we had this encounter with Crow and Petra that really set the stage for where the story was bound to go this week. Take a listen in case you missed it. Osiris was like family to me. You've never even met him. I know. Just let me speak to Savathun, please. No. I won't give that witch another chance to dig her claws into you. Maybe she's right, Crow. You know I am. Savathun is already in your head. You're a liability to the mission. Why do you have such a problem with me, Petra? Five minutes, that's all I'm asking. The Queen of the Reef forbids it. Well, I don't take commands from the Queen of the Reef. Savathun unraveled the Dreaming City with a single wish. I've spent years trying to contain that mistake. Better men than you died because of it. To my ear, it sounds like you're the liability. Maybe your Queen's trust in you was misplaced. A knife against a hunter? <laughs> I'd be more careful who you pick fights with. Another step, and my Corsairs will have to prepare you a second grave. I also want to really quickly replay the moment from way back in the past when we had a similar confrontation between Petra, ourselves, and Crow, or Aldrin Sov as he was in that moment. Defeated at the end of the Forsaken campaign, and with a relatively important interaction that is now about to become even more pivotal. Take a listen to this. <laughs> Congratulations. You have my undivided attention. Now where's my sister? She's not here, Aldrin. And if she was... This would be a whole lot easier. So... This is to be a reckoning. Wait! Not like this. Look at him. He's finished. Even with everything he's done, we can't just... You have no idea what he's done! If Cade was here, I know what he would do, Guardian. Do you? Yes. What would the notorious Cade Six do? You have his gun. Seems you get the last word. <clears throat> Everything I did, I did for her. <laughs> Funny. The line between light and dark is so very thin. Do you know which side you're on? Remember the moment when Aldrin says everything I did I did for her. I think it's about to become important to understanding the context of where Crow's character arc is going to go. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at what happened this week, and let's all see how things unfolded. You were kind to me. I thought you were my friend. Am I not? You lied to me! I helped you break Zivu Aras hold on the shore. Brought you to the last city. Offered you guidance. Stop. If that's what you want. I want the truth. I was kind to you because I wanted to be. Because the truth hurts. You know this better than anyone. Shrinking away from the rumors of the man you used to be. I'm not him. How can you say that, when you don't even know who he is? 
If the truth is what you really want, then lay your hand on me. No, Crow, don't. Please. See? Even your ghost thinks you're better off in the dark. Give me that look. I told you that you can't stop the inevitable. Deep down, Crow wanted to know. He was going to find out one way or another, guardian taboos or no. You should thank me. Just imagine if it had come from someone with bad intentions. Someone who could have colored the truth about how he died to turn him against you. Against the Traveler. But I would never do such a thing. I see too much of myself in him. We were both looking for our purpose. Now that the Crow has found his as a guardian, he can see it for what it truly is. A second chance. Something to reflect on. If people didn't want him to know, was it to protect Crow from himself? Or was it to protect themselves from Crow? I do so enjoy our talks. Ikora, I need to get out of here. What happened? I don't want to talk about it. I want out now. Either you reassign me or I'm done. Done? With you, with the Vanguard, with everything. Crow, you have my full support. If you want to be reassigned, I can do that. But maybe you need to take some time first. If I stop moving right now, I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to fall apart at the seams. I need to keep moving, but I, I can't do that here. I need to be as far away from her as possible. Would you mind working with someone you know? Who? I need an operative to act as an intermediary with Empress Kaido. It's an important responsibility. Maybe we could discuss it in person. I'll be at the tower soon. Aldrin Sov, a woken prince, brother to the queen, murderer. Now I know the man I was. And you. You. I'm sorry. You did what you had to do. I don't think I would have told me either. Savathun's visions were like a waking dream. I could feel the heat of the flames, taste the blood in my mouth. I saw everything he did through his eyes. You're afraid of who I used to be, that he'll come back somehow. I am too. So I've asked Ikora to put me on another assignment. One where I can be somewhere I know my choices are my own. Tell Mara. Tell her whatever you want. I'll see you again when I'm ready. I don't think anyone is going to disagree with me when I say that this was the worst possible outcome for Crow as far as discovering the truth about his past was concerned, and to be honest, I don't even know if Crow knows the whole truth, or if this is some edited and manipulated version of it. You see, we don't understand how Savathun showed him his past, and for all we know, the vision he's been shown could be edited in some way. It's clear that the broad brushstrokes of what he did have remained vaguely the same in this vision, though. He was the brother to and chief enforcer of Mara Sov. He fell into ruin at the Battle of Saturn. He killed Cade Six, our friend. He was killed by us, or Petrovenge, at the watchtower of the Tangled Shore. 
However, we don't know if anything further has been altered to suit Savathun's needs. If it has, then we are in a huge degree of trouble, because we don't know what ticking time bombs are lying inside Crow's head. He could be highly compromised for all we know, but none of this is easily confirmed, so it's hard to tell if this has happened or not. On the off chance that Savathun was in fact just being honest, and did show Crow his past life without altering any details, I think there is a moment we need to recognize here, a massive moment for Destiny generally. Guardians don't know much about their past lives, and if Savathun did only show Crow the truth, then we're in this place of witnessing something truly unique. You see, there are lucky Guardians out there like Anna Bray who happened to have certain information about themselves on their person when they were resurrected, but they're very much the exception. And a Guardian knowing any degree of detail like what Crow has just seen is practically speaking unheard of. Perhaps the only instance in which there's something even vaguely similar is the case of Shin Malpha, who died as a child, having just been born, and was then resurrected almost immediately by a ghost. And therefore, he only really has one life, so to speak. Crow represents something of an interesting case study, and I think that he represents, if he has indeed learned the full truth about his past and not an altered version, a possible way in which we can measure some important things about a Guardian, such as what it might take for someone to qualify for that role, and what is the reason that Aldrin was resurrected, and how ghosts choose their Guardians, what qualities transfer from life to life. All of this now, I think, is really quite important for us to see unfolding generally, because it's an area of lore that we know nothing about, but something that is core to every single Destiny player, after all. Canonically, every single Guardian in their previous life was someone else. Now, I think we also need to understand where Crow is in all of this personally, because obviously, after all this chaos and his moment of realization, he's just out of there immediately and is asking to be reassigned. More than just that, I think there's some significance here to Crow's character development that we're going to see in the coming weeks. If you ask me, we're going to see Crow push away from Marasov and try to get as much distance between her and himself as possible. It makes me wonder if the her that Crow was referring to in his conversation with Ikora was even Savathun or whether it was actually Marasov. You see, when Crow had his moment of revelation and recollection when he touched the chrysalis that Savathun is imprisoned within, this phrase was uttered in shadow and echoes. A phrase from his past, a phrase from the cutscene, which I'll go ahead and play again twice, or rather, Martin will. Everything I did, I did for her. Yep, that's. Crow, as Aldrin Sov, saying that. Saying he did everything he did for Mara Sov. That's got to be a moment that defines him, because he can see the kind of terrible things he did in Mara's name in his past life. I think this is going to be a strange moment at which Crow's healthier development was going to send him to a place like this in the first instance, where he severed his dependence on others, particularly on those who might manipulate him, such as Mara but it's clear that Savathun has done this for the sake of her own advantage. Clearly she knows that she can somehow strengthen her position by driving a wedge between Mara and her former brother, a task that she has now completed with her revelation, gifted to Crow. Keep in mind that the Witch Queen does nothing without purpose or cause, and so I have a feeling that Mara will be sent off kilter with this, and will not necessarily evaluate everything as she should. I have a horrible feeling that this is going to make her reckless, and that her hatred for Savathun and what she's just done is going to cloud her judgement. This is the kind of trap that the Witch Queen would spring, something that has been in waiting for a long time, something that she indirectly, or perhaps if she truly is devious, directly caused, and something which will put her in a place of advantage and cause her enemies to fall into disarray thanks to their own actions. This is something that feels exactly out of her playbook. What this may end up being is unclear. Whether this will even pan out is unclear. But it does seem to be the case that Savathun is strengthening her position. As for Crow, 
A crossroads now lies before him. He perhaps has everything he needs to be his past self again, only this time gifted with the light. If Savathun showed him nothing but the truth, that is. But the man he once was is a different person. A person who scares him. A person that he has continually confirmed to us that he would not necessarily be, because he should not be judged by the sins of someone else. A person that continually has been shown to be different from Crow, as set in the law and in everyone's judgments of him as the season has gone on, and as previous seasons played out. So, I think it's important to acknowledge something. Again, Crow and Aldrin are not the same. Two different men wearing the same skin. Before being reassigned to Keitel, Crow and Glint share a moment in Crow's ship, the Radiant Accipiter, that reaffirms this fact. It's recorded in this week's lore, and it reads as follows. Space is loneliness. Far removed from any of the system's planets, it is at once suffocatingly dark and blindingly bright depending on which way you turn. A jump ship sits in a fixed position in the black, engines off, oriented so its belly faces the glare of the distant sun. There is no true cockpit inside the Radiant Accipiter. The ship's canopy projects an image to the pilot. No frame, no obstructions, just the infinite gulf. Crow stares up at the blackness between a cluster of stars he can't identify. He wishes he were there. Where nothing is known. Where everything can be new again. Glint rests in his guardian's lap. He's accustomed to Crow's hands, cradling him as though he were a small cat. But in this moment, Crow's head is instead in his hands, fingers tangled in his hair. Glint is silent, patient. He knows he has to be. Crow makes a small sound in the back of his throat, and the ghost stirs. When this is followed by an unsteady hitch in his breathing, Glint floats up presses himself against Crow's chest, and begins to hum. Crow's hands close around him, clutching him against his heart. And that's how Glint knows. Crow is still the same inside. Sulfurous plumes rise from fissures in the Venusian soil. Crow marches across the planet's surface, his boots crushing thin sheets of calcium that skim across shallow, iridescent pools of water. His jump ship is perched atop a nearby rise, clear of the unstable field he now traverses. Crow, please, Glint pleads over his guardian's shoulder. Can you tell me why we're here? Some takeaways from what we just read. Crow is indeed still Crow not Aldrin Sov. If the true memories of Aldrin Sov have been transferred to him by the Witch Queen, then he has not returned to his former self. Memory does not mean personality or person, as it turns out. For those of you that don't know, an interesting detail about Crow's ship was mentioned in this lore reading. The Radiant Accipiter, the ship that can also be acquired for us from the Hawkmoon mission when you get 100 paracausal feathers, is unique in the sense that it isn't truly a ship in the way that a traditional ship would be. It doesn't have any parts, not in the same way other ships do. It operates purely on paracausal force and energies for, well, everything. It has no engines, no navigation, and no cockpit view as can be shown. The pilot wills it to do something, and it simply does. The pilot wills it to travel, to navigate, to go, and it simply does. Finally, I think it should be said that I don't know why Crow and Glint went to Venus, but I think it's worth remembering two things. Firstly, Venus still holds a great many secrets, some belonging to the Vex, some belonging to ancient humanity, some belonging to the Ahamkara, and some belonging to other involved parties. And secondly, perhaps the better question to ask is not why Crow might go there, but why Aldrin might have gone there. Anyway. That's all from me for now. I hope you found this video interesting. Go ahead and subscribe for more Destiny Lore content, and go ahead and hit the like button if you enjoyed this. You can also leave your own thoughts down below in the comments section. Tell me, where do you think Crow's story goes next? Is he going to find his purpose again? 
And perhaps more importantly, do you think that Savathun has compromised him somehow? And if he has been compromised, what do we do next? Let me know down below in the comment section. But as per usual, know that your viewership is quite enough for me. And that in the meantime, my name has been, my name is Bife. Perodasia Adastra. I'll see you, Starside. Thank you.